Hey guys and welcome to another video. My name is Kenny. I'm one of the admins here at Trade Tips. Today we're going to be talking about adding, averaging down, um, trimming and taking profit. So um, today we're going to be looking at QQQ which is going to be an ETF almost like SPY except QQQ is going to be a little bit more tech weighted. Um, in this chart here we have a bullish uptrend. The way that we define that is we have a longer term 200 um, EMA um, followed by 100, um, a shorter term 100 EMA um, above and overall it's respecting the, um, the medium and the long term um, um, exponential moving averages so we define that to be a, in a bullish uptrend. Um, in this chart here we actually have a good buying opportunity. We see a hammer candle which is defined by a small candle body followed by a long candle wick. And that happens to be placed on the uh, 100 EMA. In the past, we have seen this 100 EMA get respected before. So we're going to go ahead and try for this opportunity here. Um, in this um, opportunity, we're probably going to enter in for QQQ calls here. And let's just say that we actually just get one contract here for $4, which is going to be in uh, a $400 contract when it term when you um, consider options and how everything has a 100 times multiplier. Um, let's see, we go ahead and enter the trade. And before we um, actually um, get into this, we always have to predefine where we're going to take our profit, where we're going to trim, and where we're going to um, stop ourselves out in case um, it doesn't go our way. So in this opportunity, it looks like this is, if this is our entry right here, um, waiting for the close, and try and get our contract last minute at the close. Uh, we're gonna just try to see if we can find a place to stop ourselves out. Um, my initial thought right here is to probably get it um, be the, below the candle wick is probably gonna be our stop loss. Uh, so I'd probably place it right here and I can set an alert that lets me know that we get, we're get we getting stopped out. Um, let's see if we can find any reason why this is a good stop loss position. Well, I like to uh, probably grab this tool and uh, use this to see if we get any support zones. So far, I like that um, if I have this here, it comes and bounces and hits the bottom of it. Also, if we look in the past, we found that um, in the past, uh, this has actually predefined itself as a um, as a resistance before. And because we define that because it actually moves um, here before rejecting down. It comes up again and then it rejects down and then after it decides to break out it does a little retest and so the retest and the continuation up means that this is actually now a new support so from here this used to be a resistance and anytime you break resistance uh, and you do a retest this becomes the new support uh, so we're going to go ahead and um, and say that hey for this opportunity here because this is acting as support I would say if that we continue on downward, that we're probably wrong, that it can actually continue down to probably test the 200 EMA. Uh, but this, um, so let's go ahead and actually see what actually happens on this trade. So the next day, oh, and the next day we saw, so we see a little bit of a pullback, but it's actually pulling back to our support again. So um, in this case, this is where we actually tell you guys to add. And if we do ads, let's just say um, this contract here would be um, at two dollars so let's just say we get one contract at two dollars and this is where we start to introduce the idea of averaging down because if we have now one contract at four dollars and one contract at two dollars how do you get an average well the average is you just take the sum of the prices and you divide it by the amount of contracts you have so for this example let's just say that we didn't add and we we were just we just got it and we got um one contract at uh, four dollars and so our average is just going to be four dollars because we didn't we only getting one contract so but if we um go ahead and add here at the two dollar mark so our new average is going to be uh three dollars so you could do this on a calculator if you want but you can also just see this uh with your eyes you know if there if you have one up there and one in there then the average of the two is just going to be whatever's in the middle so that's actually going to be here at $3. And again, we're doing uh, these numbers because if we're getting call contracts, they work differently. Yes, we know that 
you know, these are 308, 304, 299. But if we're talking about option prices, this is what I'm referring to by the four, three or two dollars. Um, if you're doing stock, then obviously um, it's the same concept, except, you know, you would take the average of the 308 and the average of the 299 to get a 304. Um, so let's just say that we did take our um, uh, the the ad and this would actually take us down to a good three dollars. So let's just kind of do a scenario where um, we didn't uh, we have we bought our entry, but we didn't add. And then, of course, our new position if we were to add. So um, if we go ahead and let's look for opportunities in which we can trim and opportunities in which we would take profit, I would say probabilistically wise we do have some um a uh, nearby resistance and so we're going to go ahead and just draw that out um we see that price actually came up here we got rejected before coming up again and rejecting again so i i deem that this is actually an important zone for us to most likely uh take some profit away so if i were to take that um um, take the our rectangular tool and create another zone right here. This would be probably a, a resistance zone in which I would probably look to trim. And so, um, when maybe if we were, um, and let's say if that was a trimming zone, then I would say the movement that would happen would probably we would probably come up here before getting a pullback before uh, moving on up again. And if that were the case, you know, best case scenario. I would probably take profit um, right at the all-time highs, which is right here. And again, if you um, didn't see our last video, the way I make these resistance zones is usually on a um, uh, on a big resistance um, mark where we have one day that causes a big um, trend down. I like to take it to the bottom of the candle body all the way to the top of the wick um, in order to create this zone. So let's go ahead and fast forward and uh, see what happens with this trade. Okay, cool. We're getting, starting to see some movement up, a little bit of higher low form, and it looks like we actually hit our um, our one of our um, trim zones right here. Um, so this is actually a place where we'd go ahead and signal to um, kind of take um, take some profit off or to trim. And I would say that this would probably be like um, in an options world, this would be a place where we can take one contract off for probably $5. And so if we kind of do the math here, uh, had we just stuck with our initial entry at $4 and sold at 5 then um, our take profit would actually, or our trimming zone right here would actually only take us to um, a 25% um, profit mark. Whereas if we actually did the same thing, but um, or if we took the, um, took if we trimmed at the same place, but we ended up doing an ad, uh, with an average of three dollars now that would actually be a 67 percent profit so this is you can guys can see that um that there's actually a big value in trying to add whenever you can especially if it's everything is um holding within your plan right we said our stop loss was going to be if it broke below and it didn't do that so so that was enough for us to add of course adding a little bit more can mean you have more risk risk exposure which is something we're aware of but there also is a benefit if you believe that um if you have conviction and thinking that this is actually going to hold true as support then um we wouldn't mind adding here knowing where our probabilities lie which is going to be that it's most likely going to bounce here given um the opportunity that opportunity that we're seeing um let's just say for fun we will go ahead and actually fast forward um this chart and see what actually ends up happening it looks like we looks like we got sort of a pullback here. Oh, and then now we're touching a little bit of the um of the 100 retesting again. Over here, we actually saw that price came down all the way to the um 100 EMA mark, which was kind of our initial entry zone. And because of time decay, um, you would probably see this contract not even at four dollars. This contract would probably be at about three dollars right here because of time decay. So even though we had entered in at the same position because time has passed again and reached that same mark, this probably lost $100 in value just because we were waiting 
Whereas it's good that we added because if we um, had we added here, um, added here at the two dollar mark, you know, we brought our average down to three. You know, this is right now a break even point for us. So um, it gives us a little bit more confidence knowing that we didn't let a trade go from green to red, which would have been the case if we held at with that four dollar mark. But now because we added, we're actually having that benefit of having a little bit of cushion in case our trade actually does go our way. So again, let's go ahead and fast forward this and see what ends up happening with the trade. And it looks like we actually get the breakthrough right there. And let's see if we can go ahead and hit our zone. Perfect. So right here, I just see a little bit of a parabolic move. No, no real big pullback. And this is a place where I'd go ahead and take profit. And if, if we, um, if this was the case, let's just go ahead and just say that this was, um, this is just a six dollar, um, you know, at a six dollar price. Um, and so if we had our initial entry, we would have actually ended up still being good on, on, um, on our trade, making a 50% profit. But had we done the, um, the ad, we would have actually made a hundred profit which in options world is called it's called a bag so you know securing this is why uh call it securing the bag trying to get those hundred percents anytime you can would be ideal right but um sometimes uh depending on the market opportunity we can only grab what we can what we can see um uh, we're only trying to look for best opportunities for you guys and so um just knowing these concepts probably will hopefully will help you guys a little bit more as to why we're holding on to things a little bit longer. Sometimes they're holding um, um, above our stop loss position and we can see that it can come back for us. But sometimes, you know, just probabilistically wise, you know, what if we did have this red move and it actually continued down? Then I would just respect the trade and just said, hey, you know what? We have a new opportunity um, next time. And, you know, we would just close out that trade. Uh, it turns out for this trade, had we um, had we done the setup that we had done, we would have made um, some some solid um you know a solid 100 percent on our money back which is obviously great if we could do 100 percent every time totally could uh, <laughs> but um you know we are only we're only allowed to make as much as the opportunities are giving us um so with that being said um i want to go ahead and just fast forward this take us to uh where we are today um as of taking this video it looks like we're still having a support zone getting tested right here and oh okay cool so we, and we're seeing that although it popped back down just for a little bit let's just say we extended this down i would still say that this is still within our support zone and with that being said um as far as what what i expect to happen next is probably to see um see since we did the retest that we can see a continuation up to close this video out i do want to talk about a couple of rules of thumb that i um that we have um, if you are feeling like you're lo losing a, um, a quite a bit of money, I would say that we should start um, playing a little bit more conservatively for you. If you're playing, you know, with two or um, three contracts at a time, I would say pull it back to either, you know, one or two contracts. And when we do so, um, especially if you average down on the second contract and get that down to three bucks, had we taken it at the five dollar mark, if we say to go ahead and trim, I would just sell all of your contracts at that first trim. There's a high probability that we'll probably hit our trim, but it's even um, much uh, much significantly less so um, to actually hit our real profit target. And it really depends on just how the market's doing at that time. Um, if you're playing with a little bit more profit um, under your belt, I would say just to get you can either play a little bit more moderate or aggressive depending on how the market's doing. Um, for example, if we go ahead and hit our first trim, I would say go ahead and just trim two thirds of it, ride the other third down. And let's say that the um, price actually got all the way down back to $3 again, because you're only riding with one out of the three contracts, that one, um, that one contract can't take you down red because you already secured some profit over here. So you're sitting on some good profit cushion in case this does decide to keep going up again, which of course does, and we get into paying it well at the end. If you want to play more aggressively, I would say that, you know, it's usually if you have a lot of profit you can play with, um, then you can go ahead and play more aggressively because when you go up um, and you take your um, take half of the contracts up here, this the other half of it can take you all the way down to break even as opposed to a slight profit cushion. And uh, but the reward 
is if you actually end up hitting the take profit, then you're actually making, you know, significantly more gains. But with every risk to reward profile, you know, the more that you're willing to risk, the more you could potentially gain. I would say again, like if you've been losing a little bit of money, just play conservatively, play conservatively, just sell at every trim. And if you're aggressive, then you can, um, then uh, this is how I'd probably try to play it, you know, probably sell a half. If you're selling a quarter and you're riding three quarters, like you're letting too much um, of the of the ride part of it really take you out. And so like in case it goes the wrong way, you can take a green trade and make it make it red really quickly. So that's why I would just say the aggressive you should um, ultimately go for is selling half and then uh, riding the other half. With that being said, guys, thank you guys for watching another video. If you guys have any questions or any video suggestions, let us know in the comments down below. We do want to note that this is all time highs, guys. So if um, we can't be too greedy with our trades, because as the market's getting greedy, we've seen um, in the past, you know, a greedy market has led to a, a severe pullback down, which can really hurt you guys. Remember to not bet the farm. Don't put your all of your life savings in right now. We're going to be taking profit when we're taking profit, but you got to really respect your stop losses when they hit. With that being said, just guys, just uh, take care of yourself. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.